in New England today, they would call this a raw day. You ever heard that before? I never had from the Midwest either, and I'm in New England, and somebody said, boy, it's really raw today, and I was trying to figure out, what is raw? Wet. Not a New York thing. That's, well, it's New England. I said, well, yeah, I don't know if New York's New England, but <laughs> don't put it. <laughs> so, but it was raw. It is a raw day. Cold and wet. Raw. Yeah, raw. Yeah, you got to say it the right way. There. Raw. Hey, and by the way, just congratulations to the Braves. Are they a fun team to watch? My gosh. They are, they are fun to watch. Solaire, what? Yeah. No kidding. I don't know. Freddie, Freddie might be able to play it too. I don't know. You guys look pretty, pretty stout. Yeah, that, that's a. They are a fun team to watch. What a bunch of guys that battle. Bullpen, everybody. I mean, it's just fun team to watch. Solaire could probably get downhill to safety too. Yeah, it probably could. Probably could. When you watch other sports, do you actually watch and be like, oh, that guy could be that? Yeah. Like, does, does the coach do that? It's like, that's a, that's Only a LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> because I watched him in high school play football. Because uh, I was up at Kent and he was at Akron. I, only LeBron. And then there's a couple of things. Like there's one, somebody, oh, Rodman. I'm going, Rodman could be an Olympic uh, long jumper. I mean, you know, the way he could jump and as long as he was. I, that's how I kind of look at it. I don't look at him much in football other than LeBron. But, and maybe, uh, uh, Couple of back Wayne Embry, you guys remember Wayne Embry? Yeah. He could have played football. So. Um, King Griffey Jr. was a heck of a wide receiver at Molden High. Yeah, all those guys probably could play so many sports and do so many things. It's just which one do you want to pick? So they all picked right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, hey, uh, um, how are you getting ready for the Saints with, uh, you know, not facing their starting quarterback? Uh, Trevor Simeon or Taysom Hill might be uh, Well, you just got to have a plan for both. They're two different types of guys, and you just got to have a plan for both. And, um, again, like we always say, D, it's, it's always kind of what can we do? You know, can you look at the plan? Here's what we'd like to do against that guy. Then how does that fit with our personnel? Can we do that? Uh, not only that, does it match up with the wide receivers, the tight end? There's so many factors, the O-line. But you do have to kind of do two different plans for two different quarterbacks. It's, I'm sure, you know, I mean, they're, they're still going to run their offense. They're going to run Sean's offense. But it's, it's, you know, they both have different qualities, certainly. I mean, this seems like maybe a dumb question, but how do you handle a guy like Kamara who can be basically anywhere? On I, the I don't know if, so if you ever say, it's kind of like when you say, you know, how do you stop Tom Brady? There are special guys that are just special, special guys whether it be running back, whether it be a tight end type guy, Tony Gonzalez when he played. It was like there's always these guys that are just a notch above, it seems like everybody. And I don't know if you ever really say – probably what you said, Michael, is the handle is probably a good word. It's not like – look, it's hard to stop them. I mean, it's hard to stop Tom. It's just – but what you got to do is control them. And that handle probably is a good word. Just don't let the guy get loose on you and just, you know, take you for 40 yards or 30 yards or something like that. Is he going to, I mean, is he going to get open against probably anybody that you put on him? Yeah, we just got to be there to tackle him and not, not give up a big play. I mean, there's just guys like that. And, uh, you know, that's, we just, we got to, we got to control him. How many guys do you think you really see like that this season? Oh, I don't know, maybe five or six or something like that, maybe. So there's there's always a guy on every team that is your focal point, you know, always. And maybe sometimes two or three. But, you know, there's the guys that are just that dominant. Um, you just – maybe just a few. You know, I always just remember whenever we played Gonzalez. I mean, we had a call <laughs> – called triple. <laughs> so we had one guy hit him with the line and two guys cover him. I mean, it was like, it, it, we tripled. Like, we didn't triple him and basically man, but we had one guy hit him and in the red zone, two, two guys doubling. And so it was like, you know, there's just those guys because he's, you gotta, you gotta stop them or at least control them. You mentioned not having the stats in front of me. How did that go? What's that? How did that go? Oh, good. Good. Now, the other guys were open all the time, <laughs> unfortunately. So, you know, I, I don't know who else, somebody else probably heard us, but it, it, uh, 
We say it's not going to be him. <laughs> when I look out there, it's not going to be him. So, is that, I mean, is that a point of pride sometimes with, well, I mean, like, there, you always hear, like, oh, I don't want, you know, we're, we don't want this person to. It, it, not, that, really, actually, not really. It's really a game point. I mean, it's really, let's, let's, you know, I think it's probably true in, in every sport in some degree, like I'm sure even in basketball, you know, let's not let Jordan ruin the game, even though he did, or LeBron or something like that. Or in baseball, you got a guy that's a hot hitter. Hey, let's pitch around this guy if we have to. We're, we'll, we'll not intentionally walk him, but we're not going to throw groove one down the plate on this guy. You know, it's just there's always that game plan stuff. And that, it's really more about the game plan than it ever was about pride. What's, what's the, I know this is nuanced and different probably in man and zone. What's the coaching point on those screens? in terms of when to go, rush, and when to get that guy? Well, that's a good one, because we got hurt last week, and we pressured. Right. <laughs> Going back to last week's conversation, we got caught in a couple, two pressures. And when you get caught in a pressure, you're short in a zone, and they got us. You know, And, and really what was crazy about those two screens is both of them were the exact same screen against the exact same pressure. And, they, and the one really hurt us, the early one. We ran the second one, we got the guy tackled. It was, I think, a six or seven yard gain, which, you know, at least is, is um, you know, one, but at least that's not bad. It's not 20 yard gain like the first one. When we, we actually missed the tackle, if you remember right. So it's, it's just when you run a pressure and a zone pressure, that's, you know, you're, you got, that's the risk that, that's involved in it. If they screen you, there's certain plays, you know, no matter what you call, like if you full out blitz everybody and just put the secondary in man, if they pick up the blitz, that secondary is hung out there. They'll and you know if that guy has time to throw it, that's tough coverage in the back end. And so, when you blitz, when you pressure, when you do those things, you're taking a calculated risk. Everybody is. It's not just me. It's it's anybody that ever does it. And they caught us in zone pressure last week twice on on those screens. Is the linebacker, does he, is there anything he can do to read that, or is his job just to go get the pressure and let? Well, the thing of it is, here, here's, the th here's the thing about it is, you design pressures to beat protection, okay? You try to figure out how the offense is going to protect this look, and then what you want to really try to do is, is very few times do you really get a free runner once in a while. That's what you're looking for, but you, you don't really count. What you really want to try to do is get a good blitzer one-on-one -on -one with the running back. Because he's got, you know, the offensive linemen are going to be sitting there. They, they're used to picking that stuff up. You want to put the pressure on the running back to have to pick up the pressure. Well, so now what happens is, okay, and, and you know, it's no secret, we're not playing well enough on third down. So what happens is now the linebacker's going in there to really put a move on the running back. And so all of a sudden I put a move on him and I'm by him and he's out there running the screen. He bluffed you and then he leaves. Well, you're going 100 mile an hour that direction and the running back steps up and then he leaves. Yeah, you can turn and redirect, but it's too late. So that's kind of what happened to us last week. I mean, Dion was coming like hard. I mean, he was coming to beat that back and then all of a sudden the guy set him up and then slips him. Dion puts his foot in the ground, but that, that guy's gone. So it wasn't, it's not Dion's fault. It's just, it's the structure of the defense. We got to do a little better job you know, how we played it in the back end a little bit, but, you know, it, it's, it, it's a tough one. Because then if you tell him, okay, if you start going in there thinking screen, now you're tentative and you're never going to pressure. So now you're going in there slow, and, you know, that's not what we're trying to get done. We're trying to pressure, and when we go, let's go. And so they got us. What has this pressure change in your career based on the ability and body type of the quarterbacks? I mean, Dante, I think, was talking about just in his career, it's gotten a lot more frustrating to rush those guys. Because oh, because they're, they're more athletic. I mean, in, in all honesty, Brady, Manning, Breeze, just think of all Favre. I mean, I can name all of them that have gone against the, uh, Man the other Manning. Uh, guys were pretty much in the pocket and not going to move a whole lot. Now it's like every guy is an athlete that can run. I mean, everybody we've faced this year, except for Tom, has been a mobile quarterback that can run, including this guy. So it's like, it, it's, it is. It's, it's not like you can run all these games and these patterns and that guy's going to be standing right where it's seven yards deep behind the, where the ball was snapped. He ain't going, 
they're all over the place. I mean, I just watched a film today, Winston, I mean, and he was playing, I don't know, Seattle or somebody on film, and all of a sudden he's out of the pocket and gains 18 yards. I mean, last week, it's, it's these, in, in two of the games, the Washington game and this last game, it's been disheartening that their quarterbacks, the last, last Sunday, gained 60 yards rushing that wasn't a design run. And in Washington, the guy gained 48 yards, and none of them were design runs. So we're giving up yardage in the run game, which looks terrible, but it's more on third downs and loose plays by the quarterback getting it out than it is actually running game. And we got to play the running game better for sure. But it's not that as much as it's the dig on loose plays that are just killing us. And we had chances to get off the field in third down last week too. And the quarterback got out on a pressure. And you know, everybody's run off now in man coverage. And so because after the screen, I decided, okay, I'm going to pressure, I'm going to play man. Well, now the quarterback got out, and now we're in man coverage. And that's the downside of playing man coverage is now everybody's backs turned to the quarterback. There's nobody to go get him if he gets out. So, you know, you got to contain the quarterback when you play man coverage. So it's just that's what's really changed is they're just the quarterbacks are so more, much more athletic. And that's the way they are in college, all this RPO, zone read, all that stuff. They're, they're all coming out that way. It's just – you know, Burroughs, and there's a few of them coming out. And, you know, even Lawrence, I mean, runs the zone read and did a Clemson. So, it's, it's, they're just good, really, really good athletes. Has it fundamentally changed the way you think about pressure in your quarterback? It, it's fundamentally changed everything about defense, in all honesty. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking the other day at, at – um, somebody told me about the run stats in the league. And somebody said uh, – 4.0 average in the run game right now is sixth in the league. I can remember at New England one time we were 3.9 and 14th. It's just different. I mean, it's really different. You know, Bill Belichick told me in 2006, says, you know, this is a passing league. And that was in 2006. Think about what it is now. I mean, it's now, it's RPO, so it's not, even half the runs that are called end up being passes. So it's just really has changed the game, whether it's pressure, whether it's coverage, all that kind of stuff. It's changed everything. It really has. I mean, it, it, or is that still one of those things where it's defensive coordinators? Now it's like that defensive coordinator's turn to kind of figure out what the next Well, it, it is, yeah. It, the, me, to me, Michael, more than ever, is it's more important than ever that you don't give up explosive plays, quick ones, and that you play good on third down, you play good in the red zone. Because teams are going to get yards. It's nothing to see a college game now and have 500 yards of offense, right? It's really nothing anymore to see even the NFL games have 400 yards of offense. It's just really not. But the point of it is, is that, okay, for, let me give you an example, okay? 2019, Tennessee, we, went, we beat Baltimore at Baltimore in the playoffs. They had the ball for 97 plays. Can you imagine that in an NFL game? 97 plays. 540 yards of offense, 12 points. Red zone and third down. Sooner or later, which it, the more they handle the ball, the greater chance they'll make a mistake and we can capitalize on it. But, and just don't give up quick scores. You know, it, it's kind of like we talked about uh, over in London at the end of the game. I really wasn't worried about two minutes whether they got down there and kicked a field goal or not. I just wanted to take the time off the clock. Yardage didn't mean anything. Points did. So, and you don't want to put guys in a position where they can get a quick score. So, that's how it's changed, Michael. It's just, it's just changed everything. It's changed the front, pressures, coverage. It's changed a lot of things. And the other thing it's changed is it's changed personnel if you watch teams now. I mean, they're probably, you know, in 2004, two, you know, I had a kid, my, my linebacker was Ted Johnson, six foot five, 260 pounds. Bruski was the little guy at 245. Now it's even hard to find a linebacker at 245. 218, I mean, Debo's what, or Deion's what, 220 maybe, you know, guys, I bet it's not just him, it's around the league. But that's why they're coming out of college. They're coming out of college. They're, those are guys that used to be strong safeties, 
15 years ago are now linebackers. And so and you have to have speed on the field because it's a wide open game. Since we're talking about linebackers, I want to go back to when you first came in and you decided to, you know, you're coming in and you're looking at this, this defense. At what point did you look at kind of Foye and Dion and be like, I want Foye to be kind of the quarterback of the defense and kind of take that responsibility off of Dion's shoulders? It really wasn't. It's more of kind of the Mike linebacker. Is It really wasn't so much – it was Foyer or Dion who ran the huddle or made the calls. It's, that's really been more my deal by position, the Mike linebacker. And I felt like the decision was made because Foyer's a bigger guy when the Mike linebacker is usually a guy that plays in what we call the bubble. In other words, he's over a guard. He's not protected. The Will linebacker is usually a guy that plays behind a three technique, and he is kind of protected. Well, Dion can run. And so I wanted to put him in a position that he's protected so he could run and not have to worry about a lineman coming up on him all the time. So the bigger guy had to be the guy that takes on the lineman. So it was more by, okay, I think Foyer's that guy. I think Dion's this guy. It didn't anything about calling the huddle. Dion could call the huddle. He could call the defense. It's not about that. It was about the mic because the mic's the guy that sets the front because I want him to be in the bubble. So it was more based on the position than it was the person. Gotcha. Okay. And I was talking to, to Frank Bush, I guess it was last week. He said this allows Dion to essentially be more Dion. Is that kind of like – Yeah, that's true. It, you know, it's more the, the flow of the game. I mean, it's, it's – um, usually those guys, when you look at the Will linebackers, probably about anywhere in the league, um, those are the guys that are a little faster, freer, can do a lot more in coverage, can play more man coverage. The bigger guys are the guys you try not to put them in a lot of man coverage on backs and stuff like that, although Foyer can handle because he can run. But there's, you know, he's just, it's, it's, that was a good point by Frank, yes. And Coach Scott, how does Ingram look? Um, just with one game back, and what does he bring to their offense? Well, what he brings to their offense is a whole different style of running. Mm -hmm. You know, he's uh, he's the one cut downhill power. I mean, he can run. I mean, not that he's he he can certainly run and bounce it out, but you know, he's kind of that back that can. Uh, when when you play forty one, you just got to tell everybody you're at the point. Everybody's at the point of attack. It was like when we played Bell at Pittsburgh. I mean, I don't know where he's going to end up. I, I don't know. Guy can jump cut, take it outside, inside, wherever he's going to go. I think Ingram's a little bit more than he was even when we played him, played him a couple of different times. He's, he's a hard runner. He's a total – I mean, he's going to run over you if he gets a chance. And it's kind of like the quarterback situation. You know, I'm, not too, I'm not too worried about 15 running over us. Number seven can run over you. I mean, that's the kind of player he is. So, um, you know, it's, it's – that's like the two different types of quarterbacks or two different types of runners. Anything else? You guys good? Yeah, we're great. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys.